we are in a field near Bangalore trying to do stellar observations. Uh, at present, it is daytime, so we are not able to see the stars and the planets very clearly. So, what I will do is I uh, will remove the atmosphere and then you will be able to see the stars quite clearly. Now, if you observe here, you can see the Milky Way slowly rising and uh, many many millions of stars you will be able to see it at this juncture. Now, if you notice when we move towards the east and you will see lots of interesting stars here and uh, this is the east point and as I have told you many times uh, stars do rise in the east and set in the west so to find the positions the first thing what we will do is we will put the celestial equator we are able to see that blue line which is celestial equator and I will also put the ecliptic which is basically the path of the sun okay. now what I will do is I will enable the equatorial coordinate system so you are able to see the equatorial coordinate system equatorial coordinate system is nothing but the projection of earth's longitude and latitude onto the celestial sphere and you can see here that the polaris or the pole star is very close to the celestial north pole it is not exactly at the pole it is very close to the north pole <coughs> now let's look at two other important aspect uh, firstly when i am selecting one of these stars let's select the pole star itself uh, then you will see that the pole star pole, pole star polaris is basically has a magnitude of 1.95 this magnitude of the pole star is related to how much is its brightness it is not exactly the brightness it is related to the brightness we will find out what is the exact relation connecting the brightness to the magnitude <coughs> now you will also notice that if i take a slightly fainter star let's click on this particular star then you will see that the magnitude becomes larger Okay. Whereas if I take an uh, even more brighter star, uh, the brightest star in the sky is actually the Sirius. Uh, right now we are not able to see the Sirius. Let's look at this particular star called uh, Mimosa. Okay. So if I click there, you will see that the Mimosa has a magnitude of 1.25, which is actually slightly lower than the pole star 1.95. Uh, so the conclusion we can draw from this comparison is that fainter a star is the magnitude value will go on increasing and brighter the star is the magnitude will keep on decreasing the brighter stars usually might have even negative magnitudes okay so this is a very important aspect that is uh, the magnitude value as it increases the star is actually dimmer and as it decreases uh, or even becomes negative the magnitude the star will appear to be brighter for example if I look at the Sun this is Sun since we have see, removed the uh, atmosphere Sun is looking like this if I click on the Sun you will see that the magnitude is actually minus 26.71 so the brightest object in the sky for us which is the sun has got a magnitude of minus 26.71 another important aspect is basically the absolute magnitude you can see that here the absolute magnitude is uh, of the sun is basically 4.83 or 89 whereas the absolute magnitude of, uh, of the pole star 
for example. Let us look at the pole star once again. So, if I click on the pole star, the absolute magnitude of the pole star on the pole star exactly the absolute magnitude of the pole star is minus 3.66 so if you look at the absolute magnitude pole star is much more brighter than even the sun now what is this absolute magnitude mean uh, to understand this clearly let's compare two light bulbs one light bulb is let's say 40 watt bulb the other one is a 100 watt bulb if these two light bulbs are kept at the same distance, then which one do you see as the brighter one? Obviously the 100 watt bulb. Why is it so? Because the light bulb which is 100 watt is intrinsically brighter. That means the energy production which is happening inside the 100 watt bulb is much higher than a 40 watt bulb and that energy is also getting emitted in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Now, suppose this 100 watt bulb, if I keep it at, let's say, 1 kilometer away, whereas the 40 watt bulb is very close to you, let's say 1 meter away, which one do you think will be appearing to you as brighter? Obviously, the 40 watt bulb, right? So, the bright, in the, exactly in the same way, the brightness of stars, will also depend upon two parameters mainly there are other parameters but uh, let's worry only about two of them one is related to the intrinsic brightness of the star that is how much is the energy coming out of the star per second uh, per unit area if you want to be even more precise okay uh, so brightness of the star could depend upon intrinsic energy production or also on the distance of that star from us. So, if you have to compare the intrinsic brightness of two stars, then we have to develop a system where two stars are kept at the same distance from us. So, astronomers have, have uniformly decided to keep it at a distance of something called as 10 parsec. So, if you keep all the stars at a distance of 10 parsec, what is the brightness of those stars as seen by us? That is basically the absolute magnitude. So, when somebody says absolute magnitude of the pole star is minus 3.66, what it means is that this particular star is kept at a distance of 10 parsec and the brightness of that star when it is kept at 10 parsec away from us it is basically minus 3.66 whereas sun when it is kept at the same distance its absolute magnitude how much is that let us have a look at it once again at the sun so you will see that the absolute magnitude is 4.83 only so pole star is going to be intrinsically more brighter than the sun when both of them are kept at the same distance. That means the energy production which is happening inside the pole star is much much dominant in comparison to that of the sun. Okay? So I will pause here just to see